As a stable system moves from one stable state to another, it enters a period of chaos. In the current Iraq war, General Petraeus was able to pull off a similar transition in the military mindset, changing the traditional age-old view of using overwhelming force to a stable state of embracing counterinsurgency theory. This transition is quite a feat given the organizational structure of the military and the very different views Petraeus had on how to win the Iraq war. Let's first take a look at the structure of the army to better understand why someone with outside views would have such a difficult time impacting change. Like most large organizations, out of necessity, the military has taken the form of a hierarchical structure. Promotion from within is the rule. Individuals who adopt the thoughts, views, culture are able to thrive, while outsiders who hold the thoughts and views that are different from the organization are not promoted to the leadership levels needed to influence top-down change. Without any reward structure for being innovative, these individuals often eject themselves to find organizations that are a better fit with their style. This makes the lower levels, or in this instance, the outer layers of the organization, much more chaotic. The inner layers are insular because the individuals have been vetted many times over through the promotion process. This is what gives the army its incredible stability, but also makes it very inert to change in a dynamic environment. The military is so inert to change, it continued to use unsuccessful tactics and strategies from 2003 to 2006, a move that almost brought the American military to defeat. So how was an individual like Petraeus, who had an outsider view on how to run the army, able to impact a macro level change? Let's take a look. It's tough to define Petraeus as simply an army man, but rather as a fluctuating equilibrium of army general, incredibly bright intellectual, and savvy politician. Not constrained by the values or culture of any of these stable state organizations gave Petraeus the ability to move fluidly between them. By embracing the chaos between stable state organizations, he was able to build a network that formed the highly influential group he needed to make macro level change. Simply existing in the chaos is not the difficult part. Building a reputation and credibility from within is, and it is what uniquely positioned Petraeus to be the leader of the new military. The reason it is so difficult is that success within one stable state often makes you more of an outsider in the others. For instance, Petraeus held a PhD in international relations from Princeton. As Lieutenant Suzanne Nielsen put it, General Petraeus was successful in the army not because of, but almost despite his PhD. In the political arena, Petraeus is known for openly embracing journalists and congressmen, most generals think he stands too close to the flagpole and view this type of behavior as eccentric and immoral. Fortunately, he has qualities that redeem him amongst his peers and superior officers in the army. He has an immense physical drive and is tactically and technically competent, being the only officer ever to finish first in both Army Ranger School and the Army's Command and General Staff College. The power of an individual that embraces this chaos, coupled with the established credibility from within each stable state, has an interesting effect on group level formation and dynamics. Operating from within the chaos gave Petraeus great flexibility to navigate the different organizations and the power to pull together different and opposing viewpoints. His credibility helped form a network within the top leadership tiers, and having this kind of network has some serious side effects. The people within Petraeus's network also function within this transition state, and Petraeus benefits from their movement and connections. For instance, Without Keane acting as a catalyst from outside the system, Petraeus most likely would have never been put in a position of power. Keane alone was the only individual with the power and credibility in both the political and military system to create a critical mass of thinking. Embracing chaos as an individual, Petraeus sought out transition state dynamics in his group settings. He understood there is great power of gaining consensus from within the chaos. Because when an otherwise chaotic group of powerful individuals come together and are able to rapidly converge on a solution, not only is the solution going to be better suited for the dynamic environment, but the second and third order effects will virally impact each of the stable state organizations and ultimately cause a macro level change. A great example of this viral movement happened just one month after Petraeus convened the Fort Leavenworth Conference. Crane, Cohen, and two army lieutenants published an article on the paradoxes of counterinsurgency in the Military Review. This paved the way for the draft Crane would later circulate to 600,000 Army and Marine staff, laying the foundation for the change Petraeus would later make in the Army. 
The viral movement and influence of these groups is what gave Petraeus the political, intellectual, and military capital he needed to sidestep Fallon, report directly to Bush, and move into the leadership position needed to win support for the surge and change the military strategy to counterinsurgency in Iraq. The change brought about by Petraeus is well modeled by the phenomena of stochastic resonance. Usually used to model brain behavior and neurodynamics, it is observed when noise or chaos added to a system improves that system's performance in some fashion. It also shows that just simply having the correct strategy is not enough to impact macro-level change. For example, General Casey had been working to change the army in Iraq to a strategy of counterinsurgency before Petraeus took power. Some would argue that, among other things, he failed because he clung to the paradoxical tactic of using a forward operating base while trying to implement counterinsurgency. In reality, this was just symptomatic of General Casey's larger failure to operate from within the chaos. He was too army to fully embrace coin and didn't have access to the knowledge, network, and resources Petraeus had. In this same regard, there were many experts in the intellectual realm that understood counterinsurgency as well as Petraeus did, but none had the credibility or know-how to get the army to heed that knowledge. As the world becomes increasingly interconnected and complex, it becomes more important that the leaders of tomorrow learn to embrace, navigate, network, and build consensus within the chaotic environment that exists between stable state organizations. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to your feedback.